We've talked about randomization tests, which are very well motivated um, by the randomization itself. The fact that we would have a different value of the test statistic for each possible way we could have randomized gives us the reference distribution for the test statistic. And that makes sense, again, when we have actually randomized. A permutation test is just a randomization test applied to a situation where we did not actually randomize. So here, the null hypothesis is going to be that the outcomes are not related to group status. So for example, maybe we're doing a permutation test to compare test scores among males and females. And we did not randomize who's male and who's female, but we do have two groups of outcomes. And so the null hypothesis is going to be whether um, your male or female has nothing to do with your test score. The test statistic could be any summary of the data, but for example, the difference in mean test scores between males and females. And so now, given the null hypothesis, given that the test score and the gender have nothing to do with each other, the variation in the test statistic, the fact that there are multiple differences in means that we could obtain, is no longer related to the randomization. We can no longer say that, you know, if we had randomized each person to be male or female differently, um, we would have had a different difference in means. That's not true anymore because we didn't, we're not actually randomizing. But now we're saying we're randomly sampling from the population. If I had a different set of males and a different set of females who ended up in my data set, then I would have ended up um, with a different um, difference in means. It's a little bit awkward to use a test that looks at all possible ways of allocating males and females to two or to two groups when we didn't actually randomize, but that's what a permutation test is. You compare two groups that you did not actually randomize by looking at all possible ways that you would have randomized if you could have. And instead of calling it a randomization distribution, we call it a permutation distribution. Another way um, to phrase it that's more appropriate for the, the fact we didn't actually randomize would be to call it an approximate sampling distribution of the test statistic. Again, to do a permutation test, you take a data set where you did not actually randomize the two groups and pretend you did and look at all possible randomizations in order to get your reference distribution. Permutation tests are not as well motivated as randomization tests because you didn't actually randomize, but if you have this general idea that you could have allocated units to groups in other ways and you look at all possible ways you could have done the allocation, um, that is taking into account possible variation in the test statistic.